everyone and welcome to this new video Today I am showing you how I make um, homemade candles and so yeah, um, I recently made these two candles and I actually filmed the process <laughs> so you can see how I made them um, and these are scented candles, so this one is lavender and this one is a special blend of citrusy scents so there's orange, citrus and other different um, fruits associated in the scent um, to make them I reuse containers, jars mostly so here I have two I could have used, but I didn't Really just simple glass jars Just make sure that they can um, take the temperature, the high temperature of the candle And also what's best is to have like a constant diameter Something that doesn't have a specific shape Because otherwise may be difficult for the wick to um, burn everything as it goes along so yeah I basically also reuse the container so when I finish a candle I can make a new one with the same container the only thing that I actually buy to make the candles is the um, wax so I use soy wax which comes in flakes like that So it is a biodegradable resource and it is also re renewable So this is a big difference actually with the usual candles that you get Because this, mm, the wax used is often paraffin Which is um, made from oil So a non-renewable source And basically, yeah For example this is a candle that I bought in a supermarket and this is definitely using some paraffin wax because this is basically the cheapest wax you can get and you can see here some black uh, marks on the candle and this you will mostly have with um, paraffin wax candles and yeah, this is something I've never gotten yet on my natural wax um, candles so hopefully it will stay that way but yeah basically it depends on the kind of wax that you use mostly so yeah I use um, as I told you soy wax which you can find pretty easily on the internet and I would definitely recommend it because it is pretty sustainable and pretty cheap as well so it's the best to make your candles at home What I buy too on the internet are the wicks So you have a couple kind of wicks to use These ones um, are braided and waxed And there's that's that little fit here to put at the bottom of the container and these are like the traditional uh, wicks that you can get and fun fact actually you get them for a specific um, diameter so for example if I decide to use this container I'm gonna have to use um, different wicks than let's say a smaller container because otherwise um, your wick will not have enough energy in a way to really melt the whole um, wax you will only have a tunnel of a melted wax if you use um, wicks for a smaller container size also 
There are different kinds of wigs, as I told you. And another kind which is pretty popular are the wood wigs. Because these actually create a nice crinkly sound as you um, burn the candle. Which is really nice. And also if you um, check this second part here, which you have at the bottom of the wick, um, you can see that you can put the wood in the middle. I'm not sure you can see actually. <laughs> but basically, here you have um, this part that you put at the bottom of the container and you put the wooden wick in the middle. And the thing is that um, you can reuse that part, which is really nice because with the other ones um, you cannot reuse them as easily. So this is definitely a plus with the um, wood wicks, um, in addition to the nice sound that you get. But to me they are more difficult to use than the other ones. For example here I have a candle where I've used wood wicks and you can see that it is definitely struggling. If you can see here, I'm not sure. But there's basically too much um, wax for it, so I should have put two um, wood wicks, I think, and not just one. Because yeah, it is definitely struggling to keep up with all of the wax there is to melt. And by the way, this is a container that I bought on the internet, a nice amber color one. Um, but you can definitely reuse what you already have, especially as you start off making your first candles. So yeah, what else is there? Well, there are the scents then, because I also um, make scented candles. Of course, if you want, you can make unscented candles, especially to begin with, or um, depending on yourself and who is going to be around the candle. Because, for example, I'm using essential oils, but these can be tricky because they have certain effects on people. Some people are allergic and overall some es essential oils you shouldn't be breathing, for example, if you are pregnant or for young children or certain animals depending on the essential oil again. So this can be tricky. So at first, if you're unsure, it's nice to just do plain um, unscented candles. But you can definitely have fun with the essential oils if you want. Um, for example, I've been um, making my own citrusy smell blend, which I love so much. And this is one I've recreated um, recently. For the candle that I made uh, in order to record this video and I actually hadn't made candles for like over a year this is usually something I do in the fall time or winter but I had still a couple left from last year so I didn't really make any this year except for the one I've made for the video so I have a nice blend here that I like and this one is just plain um, lavender which actually has calming properties, so what I would recommend is making um, like some nice smelling candle lavender for example to really help you relax and maybe some other unscented candle just to have around if you like to set a mood or something <laughs> but yeah, just well, bear in mind that um, with candle candles you always have to be careful, try not to have them um, lit up if you're not around to check on them because it's always a bit dangerous, if you, especially if you have other people living with you or children or animals, just be really careful. And if you're making scented candles, know that, um, well, especially with essential oils, they have an effect on you and you can actually breathe too much of it so make sure to have them lit up like um, two hours max you know, to not have too much essential oil in your system and make sure to ventilate your room and your house regularly so yeah, I think 
that's pretty much it. Now I can show you how I made the candles. <laughs> so first I start off, let me think, by well having all my equipment ready and defining what kind of candle do I want to make. Do I want to make an scented one? If I want to make a scented one, what kind of um, smell do I want to go with today? And so basically that's what I did. Then I start by measuring the diameter of the container to know which wick I'm going to use. Um, the thing is that for the smaller one I could use the right size wick, but for the bigger one I didn't have exactly the precise size needed, so I went for a size bigger, so it should be working fine. Then I'm gonna measure how much wax I need to make the candles. I always take a couple notes when I make candles because the thing is that they're, you're never gonna have two exactly similar candles because, well, depending on the temperature you're gonna be using um, to melt the wax, to pour the scent in or just to pour the candle, they're gonna have different results so I always keep track of each candle that I make. So yeah, I take a couple notes. Um, then I measure how much wax I'm gonna need and for that I just um, pour some water in the container I'm gonna be using and um, I basically check how much weight that is and I'm gonna assume that I need 90% of that weight in wax so if I get like 100 grams of water, I'm gonna use 80 grams of wax for the container. Usually I add a tiny bit more um, wax because I know that some will stay on the equipment that I'm gonna be using, so it's better to have a bit more, I think. And yeah, once I have done that, I start melting the wax. Not directly in the container which is on top of the fire, but I'm using like a tube boiling method, I think it is called, where I actually um, boil some water underneath and then the wax on the top is going to melt because of the heat of the water. So it takes a little while depending on how much wax you have been um, using, you're gonna use. And as the wax melts, what I do is that I take the wick the two wicks, I put a tiny bit of melted wax at the bottom and I position the wick at the center of the container, the empty container. Before putting the wax, I make sure that I dry the container from the water that has been in earlier and then I put the wick at the center of the container. Uh, it would be actually better to secure the wick with some glue, but I don't really use glue. Um, I just use a, a bit of wax, which can be tricky because when you pour the hot wax it can move sometimes, so it's not the best. But so far I found it was the best way to make sure that I could take off the wick when the candle is done so that I can reuse the container. But it really is up to you. Um, it is less secure to not use the glue because um, at the end of the life of the candle the wick can actually migrate to the side of the container and can actually break it so make sure if you do not use a glue to really keep an eye on um, the uh, wick and <laughs> make sure it doesn't move. Now we wait for the wax to completely um, melt. It really depends on the wax that you're using, but I usually um, wait for it to go to 80 degrees Celsius to make sure that the wax is completely um, melted, but it's gonna depend on the wax that you use. Once this is done, uh, I let it cool a little bit because I have decided to pour the scent uh, in a rather lukewarm wax, about 55 degrees Celsius. This is completely personal, this is a personal choice, but it depends on you, 
on the perfume that you are using. You can be using synthetic perfume, which is going to have different properties. But with essential oils and especially with citrusy essential oils, if you pour the essential oil too early in the wax, when the wax is too hot, it's actually is going to dissolve most of the perfume and you will not be smelling much of it. So it really is something you can try and make different versions of with different temperature. But so far, this is what works for me. I melt the wax to 80 degrees. I pour the perfume at 55 degrees. And at 50 degrees, I pour the scented wax into the container. But really, it is a personal choice. Now that the wax is resting and um, cooling a little bit, I'm gonna prepare the perfume and for that basically um, I try to go for like between 4% and 7% of perfume in the candle. really depends on what you're using because with the essential oils I know that with um, citrus scents they're gonna be fainting away quickly so I can add a bit more but for lavender I know that half of it is gonna be enough to have nice smell not too overpowering so once again yeah this is definitely something you can try and uh, improve in your next candles also as I blend the essential oils and basically whenever I open uh, um, a bottle of essential oil the best to me to really be um, cautious is to wear a mask but like a good uh, chemistry mask which really filters all particles because you're going to be smelling and inhaling a lot of essential oil and you can get dizzy from it and you're not supposed to breathe that much essential oil that quick, you know? When you light up your candle, you're going to have a small amount of essential oil in your room but um, pouring grams and grams of essential oil is something else so I would definitely advise you to protect yourself as you are doing this process and like if you have pets you should try to get them out of the room especially to if you have small children once again a pregnant woman try not to be around as you are making the candles with essential oils just make sure everyone is safe so yeah, I keep the mask for the rest of the process up until I pour the wax and I make sure to really ventilate the room after I am done. I've noted near the um, essential oils I'm going to be using the flashpoint temperature because um, this actually helps me know, you know, it is linked to um, how volatile the essence is and it is it isn't directly linked but with this i can know basically um at what temperature the perfume is going to basically fly away and i know that if i put especially citrus essence in a uh, too warm wax it really is going to dissolve and disappear so it is an interesting point to keep so i do a tiny bit of math there to basically see how much weight of perfume I'm gonna be adding and to me this is like the top value of perfume I can add but often I go lower than that especially for lavender I think that for that candle I went um, half of what I wrote in my little notebook so it depends but yeah there's definitely room for experimentation and improvement especially with the temperature and the perfume because for example um, the, scent, the scent throw is going to be how well you can smell the scent from your candle and it definitely depends on the temperature uh, when the scent is added to the wax so really you can try maybe um, putting the scent at a higher temperature in the wax knowing that for a specific kind of scents well it's going to be disintegrating in parts so you gotta try and see how well it works for you so i stir and check regularly at what temperature the wax is 
and at 55 degrees Celsius I add the citrusy scent and then I basically stir and stir and stir until we go to 50 degrees Celsius and once we are there I basically just first secure um, the wick make sure it's gonna stay vertical because we don't want a wick to go to the side at the top because it's not gonna be burning well and once you do that you're gonna be basically just pouring um, the wax in but it's gonna be uh, delicate because you don't want to <laughs> put wax all over uh, your work zone and also you gotta make sure that um, the wick doesn't move and see, since it is only secure with a bit of wax it can be melting and going all over the place so be careful with that also try to pour it pretty slowly because one issue that I currently have with most of my candles is that as it dries and um, sets in um, the surface is not um, perfectly regular and I often have to keep a bit of wax to pour on top of it to fill the caps so that's a tricky part I've tried actually warming up the container in my oven and maybe uh, having a slower uh, cooling of the container and of the candle could be helping but so far it didn't work always all the time so <laughs> it's uh, still something I struggle with so the best thing that I found to do is really just to pour some more wax once it is uh, solidified now I've also done the very same process for the bigger lavender candle but as I told you I didn't use as much um, scent uh, in comparison to the size of the candle and the smaller one because to me for some reason the lavender essential oil just smells more strongly um, for the same size as the citrusy ones so I've used less and <laughs> then I poured um, the wax and I <laughs> put a little bit of it uh, everywhere but it's okay in the end it uh, just worked and so it defied more slowly as it is a bigger candle but it worked pretty well so I'm pretty happy with the two candles I came up with also what I really like about uh, some of the containers that, that I reuse is that I can add a lid and with the scented candles what I prefer is to have actually um, a lid on top so that I can close them when I'm not wearing them so they don't have any dust on top and when you, when you open them you can really smell the scent it's not going anywhere you know because after a year or so some candles could lose actually the, the top scent and with that lid we, I don't really have that issue so it's pretty cool so I think that's it uh, with how I did the candles um, what else can I add? Yeah, guys, <laughs> when you burn the candle, well, first of all, make sure that you often trim the wick because if it's too long, it's going to be having some weird um, flame and it's going to be not having a, an even burn and I, you don't really want that. And what else? Yeah, the first time that you light up your candle, make sure that, well... Mm -hmm. How would I say that, that the whole perimeter of wax is melted? Because if you don't do that, you're going to have such a tunnel effect. You see here, all of that wax which isn't melted, it's never going to be melted because um, the first time that I lit this one up, I stopped around here and it's never going to go further than that. So I don't really care because I can melt it away when it goes to the bottom and I can reuse the wax but if you buy a candle or if you make a candle of your own you might want uh, to avoid that effect 
so I think that's it. What else could I be telling you? Yeah, with essential oils. Um, I kind of struggle on what would be the best um, way of having scented candles because the thing is with the essential oil is that it's like a natural way of um, getting a perfume in your candle. But the thing is that basically to make essential oil you need a lot of natural resources. If you want for example to use um, rose essential oil, there are so many and so many roses going into a small bottle. So it isn't really... it is a sustainable option but it is requiring a lot of natural resources. So I don't know if it really is the best way to scent your candles. And then you have synthetic uh, perfumes and I would say that you get pros and cons for both options. I started with essential oil and the thing is too that they're not for everyone. Some people are just are allergic or you know you can't also use any um, essential oil for candles because uh, they have specific uh, impacts on the body and you have to be careful with those so like it's not it's not yeah it has to be taken into account that's what I mean so yeah I hope you found this video informative interesting and hopefully relaxing too <laughs> and yeah if you have any questions on what I used or anything let me know but it is definitely like a, a fun um, thing to do, especially in the fall and winter, and I know that like um, last Christmas, well, Christmas from a year ago and the year before, I actually made a lot of candles for my family, and people really like that kind of homemade gift, so that's pretty cool. Also, what, one thing that's really nice is that you can basically use any type of container as long as it resists to high temperature so I could actually be using this if I want and maybe even play around with wicks you know I could be using a whole big uh, wick at the center or if I want to I could be using three smaller wick here there, and there you know it's really easy up to you if you want to try something new for your candles and yeah I would encourage you to at least try you know making some candles with um, soy wax sure this one is really my favorite well i didn't actually try to make candles with any other kind of wax but i'm really happy with this one for sure and yeah then for the scent it is completely up to you what you want to try but there are many options available okay well um thank you very much for watching i hope you found the video interesting and i will see you soon